you guys, this is serious. This is really serious. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> Hello my friends, I hope you're all doing well. Today we're doing my May wrap up. It's probably gonna be short because in terms of surprises and hits, I don't have that many. Do not attack bitches. my fans, bitch. Of the shit that I've seen, you don't have that many. Ooh. So out of Ooh. 50. Because I think this is the worst reading month I have ever had. <laughs> in terms of rating, I've read a lot, which is good. But in terms of rating, girl, we'll get into it. But I think this is the wow. worst reading month I have ever had. I have ever, ever, ever. <laughs> I'm kind of in disbelief. I don't even know, I don't know what to do with myself. Like it's actually a bit tragic. Let's just chat about it anyway, shall we? How my reading month went in May. As always, we'll do my reading statistics first, then we'll get into all the books I read and their ratings, then we'll get into disappointments, and then we're kind of gonna do surprises and hits as one category at the end, because I really don't have much. <laughs> Guys, let's prepare ourselves. Let's emotionally steady ourselves for what we're about to discuss. <laughs> In terms of how many books I read, I read 13 books, which is pretty solid. I feel like 12, 13 is like kind of my average, my midpoint. Sometimes I read more, sometimes I read less, but like that's kind of my midpoint, I would say. In terms of pages, I read 4,294, which is pretty high. Like that's up there with the most I've ever read. Is I think the most I've ever read is maybe like 4,700. So it's like up there with the most amount of pages I've ever read. I had to read quite a few long books this month, which, you know, against my will. I'm like craving short books. <laughs> I feel like all of the audiobooks I've been listening to have been like 14 to 20 hours. Like that, I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks um, <laughs> to get through this. They've all been that kind of length and I just want a good like seven hour, like nine hour, like fast paced thriller mystery. I don't know, I'm craving short books. So maybe that's what I'll read more of in June. Oh my God, June. <laughs> That averages out at an average pages per day of 138 and an average book length of 330 pages. So pretty high for both of them. Here's the thing, I read two short stories this month that I'm counting that were like 30 pages each. If you take that out of the equation, my average page per book length is like way higher than it usually is. I had to read quite a few longer books. My average rating, everyone. My average rating. Are we ready to talk about it? I don't think I am. Like, I actually don't want to discuss this you, with you guys. <laughs> like, can we just not? My average rating for the month of May was a 3.11, okay? You know, that's low. That's probably the lowest I've had in a long, long time. Long, long time, ever, maybe. But let's just take into account that I did have one five star this month. But it was a reread. And I've said before, I don't feel like rereads are factored into how I feel about a month's reading, you know? Like they're kind of separate in my brain from how I feel like reading went that month. If you take that one five star out of the equation, my average rating for the month of May was 2.95. I'm actually gagged. 2.95, 2.95, my average rating. Guys, I actually don't know what to say. <laughs> this is the worst. This is the worst. This is the worst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. 2.95. That is crazy. 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 I don't even know that was possible. I don't even know that was possible. Um, the average time a book had spent on my TBR was only two months because so many books I read this month weren't on my TBR, as we'll get into. Okay, so in terms of genre, I read five fantasy, one mystery, and seven thriller. I feel like a big reason as to why my reading month was worse and like why, I f you know, obviously I feel shit about it because I gave my drink. If you take out the reread, it was 2.95. But, you know, I always have a really wide variety in what I read and I didn't have that this month. In terms of ratings, I had one one star, two two stars, one 2.5 star, three three stars, two 3.5 stars, three four stars, and one five star. At least we had, you know, three four stars in there. Girl. <laughs> in terms of how I read the books, two were ebooks, one was physical, and 10 were mixture, which means I had the physical and the audiobook. Listen, I needed it this month. Yeah, I needed the audiobooks this month as well as the physical. I need everything to help me through it. In terms of audience, I read 12 adult books and one YA. Go me, yay, variety. <laughs> 
In terms of the format, 10 were novels, one was a novella, and two were short stories. In terms of series stats, I had one that I'm classing as a companion novel, which is The Outsider by Stephen King. It has been like listed as a series on Goodreads, the Holly Gibney series, but I feel like that's more of a companion books, and I'm not planning on reading the novella, like uh, the story, the short story collection that's book two. I probably will read Holly that's coming out uh, this year because I probably will have to read it for my Goodreads video at the end of the year. <laughs> so I'll probably be reading it in that. But I'm not classing that as a series, I'm classing it more as companion books, that's kind of how I view that. So yeah, one companion, five books were part of a series, four books were standalones, two books were first in series, and one book was last in a series. But have I actually started any series this month? Oh yeah, so I started and finished one series this month, the Bill Hodges trilogy, which we'll talk about later. And then the other book, I'm... we don't need to talk about it yet. If you've watched the vlog, you know. I started a series that I'm not gonna continue. Uh, in terms of where the books were from, one was from a book box, eight were from the library. I actually used my library, guys. I joined the library again. Growing up, I only used the library. I didn't really own books. We weren't super, like, you know, we were like, Fine, but we weren't super well off as a kid. So I bit I didn't really own many books. Um, so we used the library pretty much exclusively. I can't remember owning many books, especially like during my like childhood, like, you know, once I'm not a baby. Maybe I had baby books, but I don't remember really buying books. I exclusively used my library growing up. And then when I've been in this phase of my life and I've always had like a TBR that's like, you know, start off with 60 books, I think when I started my channel and now it's like 200 books and I do, yeah. I just haven't used my library because I'm like, I basically have a library at home. Like I have 200 unread books. But for one of the videos I was doing this month, I was like, I'm not buying all these books. I'm <laughs> getting these from the library. Uh, two books I bought myself and two were online. In terms of the author status, I read two debuts, six from authors I've read from before, and five authors that were new to me. And I think that is all of our stats. Okay, yeah, let's get into all the books I read this month and their ratings. So first as part of a reread I was doing over on my Patreon of the Wayward Children series, I read Where the Drunk Girls Go by Sean McGuire and gave this five stars. This is my one five star of the month, but we won't be putting this in hits because I don't class rereads as something that can qualify to go in those sections. There we go. I then read two short stories from the Wayward Children series. I read In Mercy Rain, which I gave four stars, and I read Skeleton Song, which I gave three stars. I then began the reading for the Goodreads video where I read all of the winners of the mystery thriller category in the Goodreads Awards. You know, this is part of what contributed this month but let it be known the two books we're going to chat about them later but the two books that I read outside of that vlog this month um that weren't rereads or part of the way with children's or whatever are more egregious than whatever the goodreads video did to me if we're going into that I just I'm feel so, sorry, so deceived I know, but like, like honestly we're I just in feel this so we're all deceived, deceived. But I read The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave, which I gave 3.5 stars. Then I took a break to read the book for my book club, which was Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May, and I gave this one star. Okay, then I read the rest of the books for the Goodreads video. So I read Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King, which I gave four stars. Finders Keepers by Stephen King, which I gave three stars. End of Watch by Stephen King, which I gave four stars. Smoking 17 by Jeanette Ivanovich, which I gave two stars. Gone Girl by Gillian Finn, which I gave three stars. The Outsider by Stephen King, which I gave 3.5 stars, and Into the Water by Paula Hawkins, which I gave two stars. I think I gave this a 2.5 in the vlog, but like it's a two. Moving on. <laughs> and then finally, if you've seen the wrapped up vlog, which I do every month where I wrap one book and read it in a vlog, if you saw the wrapped up vlog for me, which just went out this week, by the way, click off if you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I read Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sulin Tan and I gave this 2.5 stars. What a great reading month, everyone. <laughs> Okay, disappointments. I mean, the whole month was a disappointment. I don't really have surprises and hits. We're gonna try and, you know, reach at the end. But most of these books are disappointments and I don't know which ones to talk about. Do we need to talk about the ones? Here's the thing, right? Let's talk about these briefly first. There is, of course, the books that I rated low from the Goodreads Choice Awards video, but most of these books I went in with like no expectations. So can they be classed as disappointments? This is what I want to know. So of course we have Smoking 17 and Into the Water, which I gave two stars, but this I went in with zero expectations. This is like almost like a humorous thriller. It's like jokey and it's like a love triangle and it's like a 40 book series now, whatever, okay? And when I read this, I had already DNF'd The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. And you know, I read it and I feel like 
I, I mean, this book is so forgettable for me. <laughs> but I read it with very low expectations because I didn't like the girl on the train. I went in kind of thinking this probably isn't going to be for me. Guess what? It wasn't for me. This one's about this like river where many women and girls have drowned over the years. And there's been a death recently in the river and it's like, did she do that herself or was it a murder? Like, what's the truth here? But I don't really see this as a disappointment. Now, one that we could see as a bit of a disappointment was actually a three star from that vlog. And that was Gone Girl. I went into this probably with the highest expectations out of any book in the vlog. And I didn't love it. I found it boring. I found it overly long. Lisa, let me talk. So I'm the second one telling the truth in it. Because everyone's so scared to fucking tell the truth. So many of you know this story. It's about a woman who goes missing and it seems that her husband may have something to do with it. He seems very suspicious. There's these diary entries that she wrote throughout their years together that kind of hint at something going wrong in their relationship. I knew the twist going into this. Okay, I knew this crazy twist that everyone says is like the best twist to ever exist. I don't think the type of thriller that this is and that this spawned is for me. I don't like domestic thrillers, really. I don't like you know, dynamics between husbands and wives. The dynamics that I feel like these thrillers play on again and again and again is boring to me. Now, this did come out 11 years ago and I think what it did for the genre was pretty revolutionary and I think it had a big influence and I think that's undeniable and I think it changed, you know, it gave women access to thrillers for the first time. The only reason that we can see the mysteries and thrillers that are coming out today that I'm interested in are because of this, because you look at the thriller genre before this and it was very masculine, it was for men only. It was like such a different space. And so I do think this has to be credited with giving women access to the genre and having books be written that women are interested in in the genre. All that to say, this wasn't for me. The domestic thriller that spawned or was popular afterwards isn't for me but I think the books that are now for me in the mystery thriller space are perhaps a direct result of the impact that this book had. Now my other two disappointments <laughs> are much more disappointing you know that they were books I actually thought I'd enjoy books I'd bought myself <laughs> and I didn't love. First, we have got Wild and Wicked Things, which I gave one star. This was the book club pick for my book club in April. I always tend to read them the month after because I read them right before the live show. And girls, honestly, I mean, this book, I have kind of blurred it from my brain because it was one star. Basically, <laughs> Basically, we got this island where there's maybe witches are following these different characters in the 1920s who are maybe witches and have magical powers. Um, there's mysterious things going on. It's kind of a sapphic relationship. Guys, if you ever join my Patreon, go back and watch the discussion live show for this because we all just spent the whole hour going, we actually don't know what happened. Like we kept reminding ourselves of different various plot points in this book. And we were like, what? That actually happened? I forgot that. I forgot that. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> <sighs> it's a mess. I hated everything about this. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the writing. Like I said, the plot is probably the most egregious. It's a fucking mess. It is, I don't know how to describe it to you other, without spoiling anything other than it's a mess. <laughs> There's so many plot points that don't go anywhere. There's so many like nonsensical actions. The characters are all annoying. This was a one star. And you know what? At first I was gonna give it a two because it's a debut. I don't wanna be too harsh, right? But then I thought to myself, did I enjoy this the same amount as I enjoyed The Murder Game by Tom Hindle, which I gave one star this year? And I thought, no, I enjoyed it less. I enjoyed it less. <laughs> this was just so bad for me. It promised me witchy vibes. It promised me historical vibes. It's like, it wants to be a great Gatsby ripoff. Like at the beginning, there's certain parallels. Like there's a purple light from across the lake. <laughs> and like, you can see with all of our main characters, the characters that they mirror in The Great Gatsby. But that kind of went like to the wayside. I don't understand how the second half of this book was to that oh my god i'm just like trying to think of what happened in this book we kept like remembering things on the live show be like no that didn't happen and then we'd find out like yeah it actually did happen it was a mess i feel like no one in the book club liked this everyone hated it it's too long it's boring there we go i'm sad because it's a debut and i don't want to be mean but i want to give you my honest opinion so and then my other big 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 disappointment this month i don't even know the the Wound is still fresh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I finished the book this morning. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> and um, I haven't processed this yet, but if you've watched Wrapped Up, which came out a couple of days ago, you'll know that I gave Daughter of the Moon Goddess 2.5 stars, and that maybe is even generous. I'm gonna be honest, I did not like this one bit. This was a five star prediction for me. This is the most gorgeous book I own. I've been so excited to read this for so long. 
yeah, no. Just need a bit of space if that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're following this character who is the daughter of the moon goddess and her and her mother get separated and she kind of ends up being like best friends with the emperor's son and the emperor's the one who locked her mom away and she's like determined to save her mum. There's like war, there's a love triangle which I hated. And my biggest problem with this was the writing. We've spoken, I'm a broken record, right? We've spoken about this so many times. Different people prioritise different things. And when I say for me, we've talked about this many times, there's writing plot characters, right? That's my ranking. Everyone ranks those in different ways. I'm not saying actually that like writing is like, I, uh, how do I explain this? Writing won't necessarily have an impact for like a three or four star, right? Because, and plot and characters will have more impact for me with a three or four star in enjoyment. But in order for me to give a book five stars, I have to love the writing, but more so, writing for me is the first hurdle. If I don't like your writing style, I can't get into any of the rest of the book. Like, I can't begin to think about whether I really like the plot or like the characters, because if I, if I have friction with the writing style, like, I can't read a book, right? And I hated, hated... This I hate. I hated the writing style in this. Hated it with a burning passion. It was over is overwrought the right word like it was over the top in not a good way i love camp i love a bit of over the topness but not a, not this wasn't good <laughs> this wasn't good everything was just so over the top there were so many metaphors and similes everything was described in this language that was just so exaggerated and exhausting i was like how many metaphors can one person have for like their heart sinking or rising like I swear that happened like 50 times. I did not like the love triangle. I usually don't like love triangles because I feel like they're always so obvious who the main girly is. You know what I mean? Like in Twilight, you know it's Edward. Jacob doesn't have a chance. Do you know what I mean? Like no chance ever. If it's unequal, what's the point? If you're gonna give me a love triangle, make it an equal love triangle. Like actually keep me guessing because I was never guessing. <laughs> I don't, I'm so sad, right? I'm, I don't know, I, I don't know actually how to talk to you about this because I am so sad. This was a five star prediction. I thought I was gonna love this and I didn't. <laughs> I'm probably not even ready to talk about this yet. Like I probably should have like read this at the start of a month and maybe by the end of the month I could have processed my feelings, but here we are. I finished it this morning and I never wanna read another book again because I have trust issues. <laughs> And then I've decided to combine surprises and hits this month because there's only two books that I can really talk about. And that I would say is the first and last book in the Bill Hodges trilogy by Stephen King. The middle one, Finders Keepers, I gave three stars. So this didn't really do it for me. But these two were two of my four stars this month. I would say the biggest surprise for me of that Goodreads video end of the month was that I actually don't hate Stephen King's modern stuff. And here's the thing, I said in the video, this is the first Stephen King I've ever read, right? And I can see how if you're someone who's read all of Stephen King, like from the beginning, maybe this stuff isn't that great, like, but it was fun. It was a fun time, you know? I had a fun time, especially with Mr. Mercedes. I'd say this is the standout. End of Watch was different, and I enjoyed the aspect of it being different. And like the ending got me, like the ending made me a bit emotional. So I ended up giving it a four, but maybe as a 3.5 essentially. So let's just talk about Mr. Mercedes. We're following Bill Hodges, who is a recently retired policeman. And he gets a letter from someone proclaiming to be Mr. Mercedes, who was this uh, killer who drove a car through a crowd and killed many people, killed a baby. And it's like him gloating because it's, it was one of Bill Hodge's cases and Bill Hodge's obviously never found out who it was. Um, it's kind of this cat and mouse game between these two people. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun time. I thought it was really enjoyable. I enjoyed the pacing that Stephen King's writing had. I feel like this was definitely the standout like Goodreads video for me, my God. That video was rough. It was rough. <laughs> my caveat that I said in this video was I really enjoy the characters of Jerome and Holly in this who are kind of Bill Hodge's sidekicks, but I'm not entirely comfortable with how either of their marginalizations have been written about. Jerome is black, Holly is neurodivergent, and I'm not sure that those were handled with complete care. I like them as characters, I'm just not sure that their uh, representations are entirely, you know, 
uh, without flaws and without valid criticism. But on the whole, I thought the cat and mouse game between these characters was really fun. I was actually fearful many times. Like it felt like the stakes were very high and no one was safe and anything could happen. So I really enjoyed this and I'm intrigued to read more Stephen King in the future. The floodgates have opened. I have made it this far in my life. I've made it 23 years without reading Stephen King. So now, one day, I guess I'm open to reading more Stephen King again. So there we have it. I'm actually shocked that this video is as long as it is, considering that I hated all the books I read and like, I feel like I didn't have much to talk about, but somehow I managed to talk to you. So yeah, let me know how your reading went in May. Let me know if you've read any of these books and have different opinions to me. I know many of you probably have read Daughter of the Moon Goddess and loved it and I'm just the outlier, but please let me know what you thought. If you got into the end of the video, comment a sad face emoji, because I'm very sad. Um, this has to pick up in June, because I'm not having another month with like a sub, essentially a sub three standard rating. I don't think that's ever happened to me in my life before. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye.